It's a little thing we call the knockout round. Spora was 20th at the start of period three. Here in the last five minutes, he's posted a 5-1 and a 3-6. So that's eight and a half pounds in two fish. And Sporer is now two ounces below the Toro cut line. Marty, what does Score Tracker Insider tell you? You knew all that open water hydrilla that we've been talking about over Lake Griffin that's sort of been MIA. Right now, it's showing up big time. Sporer's out there with a bladed jig, 5-1, 3-6. There's a group of fish in the middle of Griffin right now that is truly starting to fire. Keith Crochet is the last man in, Sporer first out. We just had Gerald Sporer catch one and move in. Right as we we're going to break, Sporer in now, Crochet is out. He caught another one during the break. He's caught 12 pounds and 12 ounces of bass in the last 10 minutes. Sporer just caught another one. He just caught a 213. Gerald Sporer's up to sixth place. Caught another, a 3-2. It's all the way up to fifth. Here's the way it finally stacked up. And what a run by Gerald Spore. He catches 23 pounds, 10 ounces in the third period to get in. He did not enjoy being around the tour of her. He wasn't there very long. Uh, what? Y'all didn't think I was going to do it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's go time. One thing left to do, that's win. Uh, practice was hard, and each round was hard, and I was able to survive each day, but I don't know if they're gonna bite or not today. <laughs> All we're gonna do is go to what showed me the best stuff, and if they bite, we're gonna catch them, and then we can win, but it's kind of up to, up to the fish. I'm gonna put the bait in front of them and fish as hard as I can. So I was trying to debate on missing the lock, so basically losing my advantage of the 30 minute runtime and starting on some offshore stuff that I had in Lake Eustis. Um, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and get to where I'm going. That way I can claim my territory and, uh, and just hope that they're biting when I get there. And that way I'm not so far behind when they start biting in the afternoon. Oh man, I was afraid of this. That's funny. He stopped right where I made that run at yesterday. <laughs> I mean, right by my stop sign. Hey Brett, I'm gonna go on this side of it and we'll just try to work together on it. I'm just gonna head all the way down this outside line. I'm gonna come back this way, that way we're not messing with each other too bad. When the sun gets up right here, you can see all the grass beds. Then you can fish them right. Because then you can cast at the points and the holes and the edges real good. Another spot where I have caught some fish in the morning. Just see. Three minutes. Back over here. One pound, fourteen ounces. Get back over here and um, got one. Three bites in five minutes. So we just need to start happening sooner than yesterday. For Twenty seconds. Something goes on, and I don't know if it's the um, offshore grass bite or if it's just this area, but these fish just don't bite in the morning. Um, 
So I, I went and ran a bunch of other stuff and was trying to catch a few until it starts to happen over here. But every single day it slowly starts to happen in the second period and then it gets really good in the third period. And um, I just don't have any, any way that I found to catch them early until then. If I, if I had a nice one-two punch, it'd be, it'd be perfect. If I can go catch 25 pounds the first period somewhere, I'd do it. But I haven't seen that yet. I don't have a morning bite anywhere. So I'm just basically waiting on this to, to happen. And when it does, hopefully it happens soon enough that we can run up the score real fast. I mean, you saw how fast I caught them yesterday. Doesn't mean it'll happen today. We got this crazy moon, and it seems like that bite got a little bit later every day. So I'm just wondering if that's a coincidence or you, these fish just pull up here when they decide that they want to feed. And then we'll see what happens. Just gonna keep on fishing until it happens. It looks like it. One pound, eleven ounces. All right. Already. One at a time, baby. Thank you. Probably just feel the blade stop vibrating. That's all the bite you'll get. One pound, fourteen ounces behind the height. Tenth place. Can't go no lower than ten. Good thing. We can only go up. Come on, baby. Let's make it happen early. Three pounds, one ounce. There it is. Didn't get a bite here this morning. We knew that. Pounds, six ounces. apples baby five pounds three ounces <laughs> dude I lost another big one cast before that oh it's gonna go down today watch just watch let me, let me take a breather real quick and early baby That's what I was praying for it just happened early to where I got a shot. Did you hear that fish put you in seventh place for three pounds, 13 ounces out of sixth place? The leader still stuck on 27? Stuck on 27. That's what I was hoping for. It's all coming together, guys. We're gonna... Our fish are starting to bite. Their fish are stopping biting. Take our time, fish it right.
caught that behind the best chatterbait fisherman in the world. trap a little bit. They were biting that thing good too. I just hadn't been throwing it. But that's another way, if they will bite it, then I can fish this whole thing different than Brett is. He's chatter, probably, I'm assuming he's chatterbaiting all this stuff. And we're just making circles on it. I don't, his isn't white though. Fish moving in to feed and then move back out and you just time it? Or I have no idea. I don't know if they just stop stop eating or if they get off of it, set up, or whatever. I don't know what they do. Well, it kind of drops off. It's like a little ledge right there. So I don't know if they go out there and then they get on this stuff. I don't know what they do. Five, four, three, two, one. Lines in. Two casts on a trap. That worked. Let's start trapping. Two pounds, one ounce. Skinny. That seems like six, seven foot out here with no grass. It's almost like they come out here and they just roam around. And they get on it. That's the only thing I can think of. I don't think they would just shut their mouths at like that all at once. Get my head wet. There's gonna be a storm. As soon as he hit it, though, he went straight in that grass. So I had no way of knowing. One pound, eight ounces. Oh, it scored, so it was worth it. I half my hat wet, my bump wet. Oh, do it work. <laughs> it was a medium life ride with braid, 30 pound braid. But well, one hits it, you don't know if he's five pounds or one pound. Whew! Man, finally finished up the championship round. That's a long week of fishing. I'm grateful I made it over here because it was tough. I mean, I, every day I was just grinding and zigging and zagging just to try to advance to the next round. Um, this place kept throwing me curveballs. I had never been here before in my life, had no experience here. And, uh, you know, so it was completely shooting from the hip every single day and got lucky and landed on some fish a few different times and, and, and made the championship round. So I was just grateful to be there. 
my my bike, my afternoon bike, it kept going further and further back every day, and I was scared that today it was going to happen when the tournament was over. And that's in the afternoon bike that I I jumped into the cut on on a knockout round and uh, the second day of competition, getting to the knockout round. Both those days happened at the last period, and um, that didn't happen today. So if you go out there about five o'clock from now until dark, you can. Uh, you could probably really catch them. But anyway, great tournament, and that puts me top five in points probably. And um, that's two top tens out of three tournaments. So that's a third, a ninth, and a 30-something. So good start to the season.